Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the great prophet who has arisen in our midst. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were unafraid to reach out to the outcast. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you preach the good news of salvation to all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, <clears throat> grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made, un ma be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. There will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. We now will hear our bishop, Bishop Ronald Hicks, speak to us. In the gospel today, we hear that a leper came to Jesus, knelt down, and begged him, saying, If you wish, you can make me clean. A few months ago, I spoke with a woman who was exposed to COVID-19. She and most of her family had to go into quarantine. She said to me, for the first time in my life, I now understand what it feels like to be a leper. Since March 2020, things like wearing masks, social distancing, and having to quarantine have made many of us feel like lepers. No one likes living this way. None of us like the feeling of being isolated. Like the man in the gospel, we want to be connected to God and each other, and also turn to Jesus for healing in our lives and in the world. It is interesting. When the leper asked to be healed, Jesus said, I'll do it. Be made clean. Not only does Jesus say that he will do it, but also, his motivation is revealed. Is his motivation money? No. If Jesus would have charged every leper to be healed, he would have made a fortune. Money is not his motivation. Is his motivation fame? No. He says, tell no one about this except the priest. Fame is not his motivation. Is his motivation power? No. After the healing, Jesus continued to go to deserted places to pray and to be connected to God the Father. Power is not his motivation. If money, fame, and power are not Jesus' motivations for healing the leper, what is then? The Gospel clearly states that his motivation was pity. The Gospel says, Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I will do it. Be made clean. The word pity here comes from the Greek, which literally means guts. This pity that moved Jesus is gut-wrenching. It is an intense compassion that comes from the deepest love of Jesus. I am here with you asking for your support of the Catholic Ministry's annual appeal. And let us take a moment to look at our motivation for supporting this appeal. The Catholic Ministry's annual appeal supports the ministries and mission of our church here in the Diocese of Joliet. Specifically, it supports Catholic Charities, which serves over 44,000 people who are vulnerable and most in need throughout our diocese with services like the Daybreak Shelter, mobile food pantries, counseling services, early childhood intervention, aging and disability, and more. The appeal supports the Catholic Schools Office, which ensures a strong Catholic education for over 15,000 students. The appeal supports seminary education, 
Currently, we are blessed with 29 seminarians who are studying to be priests. The appeal supports the Office of Family Ministry, which enriches, affirms, and nurtures hundreds of families throughout the year. The appeal supports the Office of Hispanic and Ethnic Ministries, which engages over 300,000 Hispanic Catholics and brings life to our church. The appeal supports the Office of Youth Ministry and is able to guide, form, and mobilize over 25,000 young people into missionary discipleship. The motivation of this appeal is to support all these ministries so that the light of Christ can continue to shine brightly in our lives and in the world. I think we can agree that we desire to belong to a church that is vibrant and alive, a church that prays and puts her faith into action, a church that passes on the faith and salvation of our Lord and Savior on to the next generation. Since March, many of our donations to our parishes, to our ministries, and to our diocese have decreased, while the needs have continued to increase. If you are able, if you are in the financial position to contribute to this appeal, I hope that you might be moved with pity. Or in other words, I hope that you might be motivated with intense compassion and deep love to generously donate and perhaps even increase your annual gift or pledge. If because of circumstances you are not able to increase your donation or contribute to the annual appeal this year, be assured of my prayers for you and your needs. Speaking of prayer, when I was installed as your new bishop in September, the very first letter I sent out to parishioners was one asking you to send me your prayer intentions. And I received thousands of those prayer requests back from you. I sat every day before the Eucharistic Lord during the month of November and read your intentions and prayed for you. Please join me in praying for the success of the Catholic Ministries Annual Appeal and know that I will continue to pray for you and all of your intentions so that together we can be a church that reflects and shines the light of Christ. For if we are going to be a people of God, if we are going to be a church that is thriving, faithful, and generous, it begins with prayer and is followed with action. In advance, thank you. Thank you for all your generosity and support. And may God bless you, always. Today, we are conducting Commitment Weekend for the 2021 Catholic Ministries Annual Appeal. So I'm asking all parishioners to make a financial commitment to the Diocese of Joliet. As your pastor, I want to thank all of you who have given to the appeal in past years and to those who have responded to the recent mailing from Bishop Hicks. I can assure you that the gifts that you have given are deeply appreciated by the people served by the diocesan ministries. You might ask why each of us should support the CMAA. Well, all of us are called to share his or her gifts with our local church and the universal church, and the CMAA is a very effective way to accomplish this. Since we cannot conduct the in-pew process as was done in the past due to the COVID-19 restrictions, things will be done a bit differently this year. Soon you will be receiving a mailing in your homes from me with an in-pew envelope inside. Please fill out the envelope and pledge the amount you committed to and mail in the envelope. As you complete the form at home, please print legibly. Make sure your name, address, etc. is filled out along with your email address. Please also indicate the name of our parish, St. James the Apostle, so that we will receive credit for your gift. If you have already made a contribution or pledge through the initial mailing from Bishop Hicks or by going online to the diocese website, 
please accept my sincere appreciation for your support. If you pledge, you will receive payment reminders in the mail. A pledge will enable you to make 10 small monthly payments. Please also consider making what we call a recurring gift. This is a very convenient option for donors and saves the diocese money on postage, sending monthly statements in future mailings. Our goal is to have 100% participation. So on behalf of Bishop Hicks and myself, I thank you for your contribution to the Catholic Ministry's annual appeal. May God bless you. Now together let us stand and make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Together, as one voice, we turn to our merciful, ever-present God with our prayers and petitions. For all members of the Church, may the Holy Spirit draw us ever more deeply into the communion for which we are made. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God give them fortitude in working to promote peace and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving broken relationships or the loss of a loved one, may God's presence offer comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may God grant them strength and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, may our desire to imitate Christ inspire us to share our many blessings as his stewards through our, the 2021 Catholic Ministries Annual Appeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill or homebound, those on our parish prayer list, may they be uplifted and comforted by God's grace and the compassion of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rejoice in the communion of heaven with the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we offer in the silence of our hearts. for the special intention of this celebration, and for all the prayers written in our book of petitions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, trusting in your saving power, we offer our prayers today through Christ our Lord.
not call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you? But call your name Will you set the prisoners free And never be the same Will you kiss the leper clean And do such as this unseen And admit to what I mean in you And you Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right <clears throat> and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now we offer a greeting of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. A couple of announcements. Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, February the 17th, a day of fasting and abstinence. Mass with distribution of ashes will be offered at 8 o'clock in the morning for those who have already pre-registered. Distribution of ashes will be offered at the doors of church from 12.15 until 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and again from 5 until 6 o'clock in the evening. Please see this weekend's bulletin for more information about how this will be done with the diocesan COVID directives in place, as well as for a guide to fasting and abstinence. Secondly, there will be a special collection on Ash Wednesday taken for the church in Central and Eastern Europe. Donations may be placed in the baskets available in the church in Arthex on Ash Wednesday. In addition, a link to contribute online to this national collection may be found on our parish website. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.